When the European Space Agency was set up in 1973, one of its first and most important objectives was to develop Europe's own launcher. The reason was simple. Without a launcher, you can't go up into space. Six years later, the first Ariane 1 launcher took off from Europe's new spaceport in Kourou, French Guiana. Over the years, ESA has built a whole family of launchers, with Ariane 2, 3, 4 and 5. Each of these launchers utilizes technology that was already created from another family member, a cost saving. Ariane 4 proved to be a giant leap forward from its predecessors, but after 15 years of loyal service and more than 100 successful launches, Ariane Space's workhorse of the 1990s will undertake its final flight on the 12th of February. It will then be replaced by the more powerful Ariane 5. Ariane 4 has had a significant influence on all of our lives. Communication satellites from all over the world have been carried into orbit by an Ariane 4 launcher. These allow global communications by phone, they distribute television programs to millions of people and transmit live images from events across the world to television newsrooms. And if it weren't for Ariane 4, meteorologists wouldn't have the detailed satellite images that allow them to make much more accurate forecasts. With the images and information provided by weather satellites, they can issue early warnings for hurricanes and save lives by predicting their path. Scientists also use them to monitor the effects of global warming. Ariane 4 has even contributed to democracy and sustainable development indirectly, by fostering the free circulation of information and protecting the world from the hazards of nature. Ariane 4 was launched before the fall of the Berlin Wall. In those Cold War times, it was the world's first commercial launcher, built not for military purposes, but for the market. To develop these economical launchers, ESA adopted the building block strategy. It uses the different large components of a launcher, such as the engine or the fuel tanks, and assembles them in different ways, like building blocks to create a launcher that can be adapted to meet specific market needs. The end result was a range of six different Ariane 4 launchers, each uniquely suited for a particular purpose. On its final flight, the launcher will carry an Intelsat communication satellite. Over more than a decade, Ariane 4 has been responsible for 50% of commercial satellite launches. It has flown with two and four boosters depending on its cargo and mission. Now this trusted member of the Ariane family is being replaced, primarily because of its limited payload capacity. Ariane 4 cannot perform double launches with the increasingly heavy telecom satellites. The more powerful Ariane 5, however, can. Six tons today, its payload capacity should soon reach 10 tons. That's more than double of what Ariane 4 could handle. Ariane 5 is highly maneuverable and it will become possible to use it for combined missions, in which it sends satellites into different orbits. All of this will make the cost of transporting one kilogram of payload into orbit cheaper than with even the most powerful of Ariane's. The launch of heavy satellites has become a fully-fledged market and competition is increasing. However, there remain small satellites to be launched, for which ESA is developing a smaller additional launcher called Vega. It will carry payloads of no more than one and a half tons into orbit, utilizing much of the technology already used in the Ariane launchers. Vega's first launch is planned for 2005. ESA is confident that these two new launchers will enable it to maintain Europe's position on the world's satellite market.